In this video, we're going to look at various ways we can create and use alpha brushes in Blender. So let's get started. So let's quickly make our own alpha using Microsoft Paint. Let's make the canvas square and then fill in the background black. And then if we use one of the bigger brushes, use the white color and then make a shape like this. And everything white will be the highest point of the alpha and everything black will be the lowest point. Every, everything gray will be somewhere in between. Okay, so if we save this out as a JPEG or a PNG would be fine. We're going to Blender now and we create a sphere. You want to know more about the add-on I'm using to create objects and remesh, then um, check the description for that. I'm remeshing this to 0.1 and then I'm using the mesh filter tool to smooth out the mesh. And then I'm remeshing it to 0 0.5, 0 0.05 voxel size can see down here and this is so that we've got a lot of voxels to use so we can see our alpha once we bring it in so now i'm getting the sculpt draw brush and i'm going to tools and i'm going to make a copy of this brush and i'm going to call it alpha and then if we go to brush settings and we open up texture then we'll see we've got the ability to add a new texture and if we click on the show texture tab button then we can open our texture and then you can see in the preview how that will appear now if we just paint this now it's it works but it's not quite the control that we'd like we can't change the angle orientation of it and we can't place it very accurately where we'd want it so if we change the mapping to area Area plane and then change the stroke method to anchored you can also while you're on the viewport press E to change the stroke method and then now if we drag click and drag on the mesh we're able to place the alpha we created with more accuracy you're also able to hold control and do the reverse of the alpha you've created so a little detail that you might notice with the alpha as we're placing it is it's a bit softer around the edges here and that's because of the fall off of the brush we've got set currently so if we look at fall off you can see it has a smooth fall off so if we change this to constant for example you can see that you get exactly what the alpha describes so that can be useful if you don't want it to blend in it can be good to have a fall off like a smooth fall off because then you're able to blend in two of the patterns uh, together more seamlessly but as it is with this one it seems to work quite well as constant. So if we wanted to create an alpha from an existing image, we could go onto a website like this. I'm using a website called burst.shopify.com. It seems to have commercial use free images. So if we search for texture here, we'll find something that we can use to create an alpha from. So if we take this Japanese garden rock texture and we'll download, we only need the low resolution version. And then if we go into a bit more advanced image editor, so I'm using Affinity Photo here, but you could use Photoshop or anything that allows you to add basic filters and layers, creating a new document. We make it about 1024 by 1024 and create that. And then we're gonna place in the image that we've just downloaded. There we go. And now we're going to add a black and white filter and that will give us a gradient between black and white that we need to have an alpha and you can adjust these color sliders here to add or remove the colors from the image when it's being converted to black and white and we can make parts of the image more white or more black we can get the shadows much deeper here we want to create quite a lot of contrast so that it looks good when it's used as an alpha in blender i'm also going to add a levels filter and that's so we can clip the black and the white level so that we have a high point and a low point of the image so that looks pretty good I'm now going to export this out as a jpeg then if we go back into blender and we look at our sphere again if we just change this texture to use tutorial 2 we'll see how that looks so you can see because we're using the constant fall off it's quite a sharp transition so this might be a case for having a smoother transition like this and that is creating your own alpha from an existing image 
And if you're not happy with how much it's bumping in or out, then you can hit Shift F to just increase or just decrease the height. I find if you have it too high, it does distort quite a lot. So tend to have it quite low like this. And especially if you're 3D printing objects that have textures like this, you don't want to go too far because uh, it'll require a lot of additional supports depending on your orientation anyway of the print. And before we move on to the outro, I just wanted to mention that I've put together a small starter pack of alphas. So be sure to check that out on my Gumroad and you can download it for free and get started sculpting with alphas. Thanks for checking out the video. If you're interested in joining a community of makers such as myself, uh, check the description for a Discord invite. And we've got a few different areas. We've got a general chat to say hello, introduce yourself. And there's a feedback area where you can post pictures of things you've been working on. If you have any questions about Blender, uh, then you can ask them here and you can get answers from various members. Anybody interested in sculpting is welcome to come and say hello. So hope to see you there. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you haven't already and you can become a supporter of the channel. Get early access to videos like these. All of the miniatures on my Gumroad store for free. Thanks to everyone that's supporting me so far and I'll see you all in the next video.